what happened with uh, you and Headbangers Ball? Did you just decide to leave? And well, no. See, this is the thing. I have a book coming out about it. Yes. This, and uh, I, I'm gonna, you know, it's all like journals, diaries, everything. Um, through the, you know, almost four years that I hosted it, and I'm gonna just explain everything in there, and not, you know, put it out there now. Um, but you know, it, it, the whole thing every company cutting everybody's jobs we tried like I tried to shoot the show myself you know then there was no editing staff it, I talk about it in the book but um, it's it is what it is it's everything the economy you know it all affects the music industry yeah. you know, the, the whole music industry is not doing so hard right now no, no sadly it's not I gotta say it was all an interest, interesting thing um because I grew up, uh, cause I'm not that I'm like a few years younger than you, really, and so I grew up in the early '90s, late '80s with Headbangers Ball. I was like, man, the show is great. So Saturday nights, you knew where you were always going to be, and yeah. it was like. So I remember hearing that they were bringing it back. I was like, wait, they're bringing back Headbangers Ball? Like, no way. Yeah. So it was great that it came back. But then, as you brought up, like, yeah, with things being cut, it's kind of sad to see it go away. I mean, it's still yeah. kind of I think exists, but it's like. I think it's like only an hour now, like a video yeah, a, here and there. It's, yeah, no, it's nowhere two, near what it should be it's at this point. In the morning, yeah. And I mean, they're very supportive still. And yeah. Everybody, I have nothing but good things to say about everybody who was at MTV too. Um, and a lot of them have lost their jobs. You know, yeah. It's unfortunate. See, I lucked out because I already had the best job in the world. Then I got this, you know, another best job in the world. So, but uh, I learned a lot and. I got interviewed everybody from Slash to Iron Maiden to Metallica to Jada Pinkett Smith and you know, uh, all the wrestlers. Stacy Keebler was on there. I mean, we had like, you know, Buckethead. I mean, there's a lot of cool mm. um, episodes that we did. Lemmy, Dio. I mean, it was, it was insane. It was insane. Zach Wild. So, but it'll all be in the book. Okay, very, very cool. Very cool. Well, I can. You just brought up your working on the book. Um, so yeah, like I said, you're 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 still a really young guy. A lot of people don't realize that. You in a way like how Max Cavalier uh, started off some tour. I think when he was like 13 or so, and then like you realize. I remember seeing Soulfly one year. It was like around. It was the day of his birthday, and it's like this man's only 32 years old. <laughs> it's like he's been. He, yeah, he's been like around for so long. You don't ever think about it. It's the same thing with you. Like you started off hate free when you were really young, and so you're still very young. Um, and recently on that, you were on uh, that metal show, and Don Jameson called you one of the hardest working guys in show business. With that being said, uh, what's next for Hapri as well as yourself personally? You know, I just just a lot of recording. Just got <laughs> you know. I think next year, you know, don't we're not going to tour as much. Record more. I, I want to do a second King of Sorrow. I gave Kirk uh, fifteen uh, song ideas, and uh, I want to do another Hapri record soon. And, Maybe we'll do a summer tour, but uh, probably, you know, probably just record as much as we can and, um, yeah, finish the books and just, you know, get everything going that, you know, all the projects that have kind of been in limbo, you know, get them out for next year. But, yeah, doing that metal show was cool. They're, like, way too nice to me. I appreciate it. Oh, and, and Carrie Lee, I just heard, died. The girl who... Uh, the Box of Junk yeah, Girl, the yeah. Box of Junk Girl, which I heard this morning so that's you know our thoughts go out to her family and her friends I, that's terrible I just heard that I, I just heard it from you just now actually I didn't even know that um well I feel weird as a weird segue I guess yeah. yeah yeah it's kind of an interesting segue but, um I'll wrap it up real quick um two last questions uh outside of music and the world around you what else inspires you and influences you creatively well I think you know this last record was just all different personal family things like you know especially losing my grandfather I wrote Hands of, Hands of a Dying Man about that and also Undiminished the parts of the instrumental I worked on I was kind of inspired by that um, but there's other songs in there too relationships I try to sing about stuff that was a little bit different I mean there's some motivating kind of uplifting stuff in there too but um, I tried to mix it up on this record and, and use other events that were kind of in that time frame but you know, it's still it's still I think a, you know a progression from supremacy. It doesn't differ too too much. Okay. And um, last but not least, like I said, I, I keep emphasizing on the fact that you are a very young guy. You've accomplished so many you. things. I don't feel young. <laughs> you know, you actually are. Uh, 
Uh, with that being, with that in mind, um, are there any words of encouragement for the younger kids starting out either hardcore or metal to keep them going as well? Just you know what, uh, if you get out, if you get offered a record deal or you get offered a publishing deal, get a lawyer, spend the money, save your money, do some shows, do a benefit show, sell raffle tickets, do whatever you got to do to get a good lawyer and don't get caught in a bad deal. And um, you know, if, if 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 one guy wants to sign you or one guy. Wants deal there's probably other people out there that will want to don't just go with the first one and uh, don't you know make mistakes like I made in the past and uh, you know just yeah um, book your own shows put out your own records at this point I would say you know you're probably better off just put your own records sell it get a PayPal account press the CDs yourself book the tour yourself it's, keep the DIY spirit going you know what I mean that's that's how we did it yeah. any uh, thing you want to plug as well, besides the new record. Just check out all the MySpace. I'm on Twitter, I'm on Facebook, I'm on, you know, freaking, I'm on everything. Check all that out. Happy holidays to everybody. Check out HatebreedStore.com. We're blowing out all the old shirts. And people can get shirts for like nine bucks on there. Everybody's, everybody's coming up saying, thanks, I got two shirts for like 15 bucks. And people are happy about that. Um, yeah, that's really, you know, check out the new CD. Go get our DVD. Check out For the Lions. And we'll see you next summer. This is it. We're not touring until next summer, so we'll see you then. Okay, thank you very much.